What is up you guys? I am Paige and today I have a very exciting video for you. We are going to be going through my list, my survival guide, for what I would like to have known before I went through the college audition process. Now if you don't know, I am a musical theater major at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale and basically in order to get into a musical theater uh, BFA program you have to go through the audition process. Now I did a lot of on-campus auditions and a lot of unified auditions so I think that because I went through this process and I made it, here I am, I think I would like to share with you some of my tips as to what you can do to help yourself get through this process. So let's get started. So let's get started with what is, you should be getting done way in advance. First you need to get yourself some help. I know that I'm supposed to be helping you but you need mentors in your life. I'm talking a voice professor, your choir director, your theatrical director, if you've had an acting teacher, anyone that can really act as a mentor in guiding you through this process and making sure you haven't forgotten anything. And I personally have had a great deal of mentors in my life. Um, my choral director, Mr. Markley, has always been there for me as a sort of mentor in this process and he actually acted as my accompanist for my pre-screening process. Also, my voice coach, her name is Lisa Hedin, and she is top-notch, so she really helped me get everything organized, and I really felt like I could not have done this process without them. So, get yourself a mentor. Do it. So my next point is about getting training. I think that you should get voice lessons and any take any experience opportunity that you can get when it comes to singing. If you have a choir that you can be in, if you have an ensemble that you can audition for, go to your state's local competitions if you can. You want to get yourself performing vocally as much as possible. Also being in choir can help you learn how to sight read and that is great at an audition. Oftentimes at an audition they will have you sit down with a sheet of music you've never seen before and read it off of just thin air so and then perform it for them so you should get familiar with solfege and i think that being in choir will help you with that also having a voice uh, teacher if you have a vocal coach you can really get yourself more one-on-one -on -one experience and you can get yourself prepared more your voice teacher will help you pick out rep and help you figure out exactly what your vocal type is and they will really help you figure out exactly where you need to be, where you're at, and how to get from A to B, you know? I would also recommend, <clears throat> wow, your girl needs some water. I'll be right back. Another quick tip, I think that you should probably, if you have the opportunity, definitely take music theory, especially if you can take it as an AP course. I took music theory in high school and I took the AP test and then I tested out of music theory in college, so I do not at all have to take music theory. That gets me out of an 8 a.m. every day. Get yourself into music theory so you can get yourself out of music theory. Also, it's really important to know this stuff. Being in music theory will help you understand what you're singing so much more clearly. It, it, it makes everything make more sense. So, definitely get yourself into and out of music theory. You should also get some training in dance. I would recommend taking, if you haven't been taking dance classes for your entire life, don't take dance classes. Like, if you're already in dance classes and you're like one of those people that was in dance from the time you were three, then you are phenomenal. I know some excellent people who are really great at dancing and they have been taking dance their entire life. That's great. But if you're just starting out like I've been and I was, 
it's best that you just start with a solo one-on-one -on -one dance lesson just you and the teacher because taking dance with a bunch of eight-year-olds and learning the five positions of ballet imagine that you are beautiful swans is probably not going to help you in the same way that someone who knows where you are can base your experience and training on where you are and can maybe pick up the pace a little bit, that will really benefit you in a college audition. Because there is a dance call in most of your auditions and honey, you have to know what is going on. <laughs> I also recommend getting yourself familiar with the terminology you may find you hear at an audition. If you are unfamiliar with the terminology, pirouette, plie, ball change, grapevine, etc, etc, you should probably be doing a quick Google search on these terms so you can whip them out inside a dance call. So I recommend going on the internet and finding some tutorials that you can find of dance calls. There are lots of colleges that post their dance calls online and you can learn how to dance so that way you can one, pick up some of the terminology they use and two, see how fast you can pick up a dance routine and learn it because that's what a dance call is. You have to pick it up very quickly and learn the routine and perform it well. So definitely get yourself some dance training. Next thing I'm going to be talking about is doing some research. Firstly, you need to know what colleges you are going to audition for. Now I have the firm, firm belief that you need to spread out a wide net and do not just the top 10 colleges that you find on the internet. You need to pick a variety of schools, I'm talking schools that you think, oh, I'll never go to that school, to schools that, oh, I'll never get into that school. Any, any school that you are like, or like, I'm not getting in there. Any school like that, you need to audition for. Uh, you need to cast a wide net of schools because otherwise you are very much limiting yourself and you have no idea how those auditions are going to turn out. Because sometimes a school will have as low as a 1% casting rate and other times you will not know what they are looking for. If they're looking for blondes, because all of their blondes just graduated, if they're looking for sopranos, if they're looking for mezzo belters, you need to be auditioning for as many programs as you can fit into your schedule because you do not know what to expect and you need to give yourself multiple options because you don't know if you're going to get into your dream school and you don't know really what school is going to be your dream school until you get those results. <laughs> so when considering programs, you should look at things such as program size, location, whether or not they have a master's program. You may want to consider how many shows they do a season and what their curriculum is, who their professors are, do they have any alumni that you recognize the names of. You need to make sure that you are getting the experience that is suited best to you. I placed heavy consideration on the size of my school and the size of my program and the location of my school as well as whether or not there is a master's program in my field. Now there is a master's program in vocal performance but there is not a master's program here for the musical theater. This way I didn't have to go up against master's students for some of these roles. An important thing for you to do when you're finding these schools is you should put them all into a spreadsheet or a list of some sort if you prefer that type, but I'm very visual and a spreadsheet which you can print out, you should do. And I'm talking list of the school's names and then all of these different categories of the school so you can look at them and compare them directly, like right next to each other. You should talk about the tuition and whether or not they have scholarships and anything that you need, you should put on that spreadsheet. The next thing I'm going to talk about today is going to be at the audition pieces. Now, most schools are going to require one to two audition pieces of music, meaning you'll have 16 to 32 bar cuttings of two contrasting pieces or just one really good piece that you're really good at, and then you'll also have one to two monologues, and they should also be contrasting. 
One thing to note is that every school is going to be different in what they require, so you should make sure you list that on that little spreadsheet I was talking about. You need to make sure that before every audition you're bringing in the right material. So just make sure that you know and you have listed for yourself which programs require which types of material and how much material you need to bring in. Also, whether or not they have a dance call. I recommend picking two completely different musical styles for your musical selections, like something more contemporary and then something more classical, or like a belt and then just a softer piece. The same goes for your monologues. You should have a dramatic monologue and a comedic monologue, or a Shakespeare and a contemporary monologue, just so long as you can showcase different parts of your skill set. Remember that when you perform these pieces, you are going to have to slate yourself. To slate yourself means that you're going to have to basically introduce yourself and then introduce the pieces that you're performing. And usually you will list the name of the piece and then who it's by and what show it's in and just like what character you're playing. Just make sure you've got just all encompassing. Make sure you list everything that you need. You need to memorize and know these shows and know who you are in these shows. Hi, I am Paige Manning and I will be performing Woman from the Pirate Queen by Schoenberg, Maltby, and Dempsey. When you are performing these pieces, you should have a sort of routine set for each of them. You cannot, do not just stand there and sing these pieces. You need to perform. This is a performance and you need to showcase that you know what a performance means. Here is a tip. When you are doing these pieces, you should pick a focal point. Now your focal point is where you have your focus, where you're looking throughout the pieces. Focal point you should put above the heads of the people observing, in the center, and not too high, not too low, just like it makes a more engaging experience for them, and it makes you look like you're actually involved in the scene as opposed to just like, la, 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 la. I'm out here, in the middle of nowhere. Just a quick FYI, do not make them the scene partner. Imagine your scene partner behind them. So that you should be prepared to answer questions about any of your pieces. I'm talking about you should know what your character wants. You should know what show you're in. You should know what scene you're in. You should know who your character is talking to. So an important thing to do is to get organized. Once you have your schools picked out that you're going to audition for, like, you need to schedule them. And in order to schedule them, I highly recommend printing out a long list or a calendar of every conflict you're going to have dur for the duration of the time that you are going to be auditioning. So that way you don't accidentally schedule an audition during one of these times. Then you can add the auditions to your list of conflicts, so that way you don't schedule anything else during your auditions. You also should definitely highly consider going to Unifieds. There are, I believe, three um, Unifieds locations. One in Chicago, well, I believe one in New York, and maybe Los Angeles. I'm not sure about that, don't quote me. But you should get yourself to your closest Unifieds and get yourself to those auditions. Because basically it is a collection of a every different school that you can think of is going to be there at Unifieds getting their auditions done. So it's definitely less personal, it's way more rushed, but you can squeeze in so many auditions so you don't have to pay for as much travel expenses, and that way you get a chance to do walk-in. This can be good for audition experience, and it can be good to get yourself to know schools that you didn't think you were going to go for. Definitely audition at Unifieds, and walk in to as many schools as you can at Unifieds. One thing that you need to worry about early on is pre-screens. Some schools will require that you do a pre-screen audition, which, but when you're doing these, you need to make sure that you have a ready accompanist for you. Like I said earlier, Mr. Markley, my choral director, was my accompanist. And it's important to rehearse with your accompanist, make sure that they are prepared in advance, make sure that they know that when you're performing this um, and recording in advance, you need to make sure that they are given plenty of time to learn your piece and work your piece with you so that way you can present the best performance that you can possibly think of. 
and make sure that you think you're a companist. By the way, thank you, Mr. Macron. Next thing I'm going to be talking about is resumes and headshots. As far as resumes go, create your resume, update your resume with all of the material that you want to give out and show off in your resume and all of anything that's relevant. And then you need to have people, multiple people review your resume. That way, if you made a mistake and call California Sweet, California Sweet with two E's, you'll know in advance <laughs> and you can fix that. Another thing that is important on your resume is you should include in a special skills section something funny and weird about yourself. Like if you can do a really good Britney Spears or Shakira impression, or if you have double jointed thumbs or something, then you should definitely include that because it'll be memorable and it might be a conversation starter in the audition room. So another step is taking and printing your headshots. So basically a headshot is going to be from about here and it's just your face. You don't want to do a full body, you don't want a selfie, you don't want Snapchat filters, you need professional photos. So the next step in this process is to rehearse, 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 and rehearse again, because you need to get as much practice with these pieces as possible. So practice your slate and practice your audition, your full audition as many times as possible. Practice it in front of your family, in front of your friends, in front of your teachers, in front of your dog, do it in front of the mirror, or record yourself so you can see what it, you're doing. Actually, definitely record yourself and see what you're doing. Like, do that. That's a good idea. Yes. Also, remember to do walk-ins and audition for schools that you may not think that you're going to go to, because that is one, audition experience, and two, that gives you more of a wide cast net. You never know, you might end up going there. They could be some random school that you've never heard of in Massachusetts, but you could end up going there. For the next part of the video, I'm going to be discussing what to do during the day of your auditions. So first thing to do is to make sure that you have everything you need, any required materials you have for the audition, or um, you need to have a resume or several resumes printed out depending on where you're going with your audition that day. You're going to need several headshots printed out, if, especially if you're going to unifieds. And even if they don't require a resume and a headshot, it's the professional thing to do to have a resume and headshot. Also, you should have yourself a sort of little survival pack. Pack yourself some water, obviously, maybe some throat coat tea. You should have cough drops on you and definitely make sure that you have a snack because it's a stressful day you're going to be running it around so just keep yourself healthy okay my secret to success is emergency um, whenever I'm feeling under the weather I just like pop that in I don't even like take it with water and I'm just like like Popeye and then I'm good <laughs> important thing is that you need to make sure that you have all of your pieces, your musical pieces, in a binder and you should have that hole punch and clearly marked for every audition so where to start for the accompanist and where to stop for the accompanist. Uh, an important thing to do is to take the pages and like take them together so that way it's front to back so it minimizes page turns. It's just the more professional look. As you can see here, you can just tape the pages together and so it just is easier for the accompanist to turn the pages and it minimizes the paint turns and it's more like it would be in an actual book. Then you just clearly mark where you start and stop and indicate to your accompanist where you have any odd parts in your song. So you may be wondering what to wear to your auditions. I know I was like, oh my god. What do I wear to all my auditions? And an important thing to remember is wear, dress well. Don't just come in in jeans and like gym shoes. Dress appropriately, dress nicely, but dress to your own style. After all, you are selling yourself as a person. You're selling your sense of style and your sense of individuality. The next thing I'm going to talk about is arriving early. 
definitely arrive early because it gives you enough time to warm up and just emotionally prepare yourself, make sure that you memorize your slate and your pieces are well memorized. It's just a good thing to be there early. Another thing to note is to be kind towards everyone. If you never know who you're talking to when you're talking to someone, and you never know whether or not they have an impact on whether, like, whether or not you're in the program. So, be nice to your fellow students, you never know who's watching. Be nice to the current students of the program, and obviously be nice and professional towards the adults that you meet. I'm talking the person letting you into the room, and the person whom you give your music to, and just everyone. Be nice to everyone. During the vocal and acting performance, I have prepared a list of do's and don'ts. Do. Speak to your accompanist, be kind to your accompanist, and probably discuss the tempo because if they're going too slow for you, you're gonna run out of breath because that's not how you rehearsed it. Do, after slating yourself, take a moment to get into character. They will say something like, whenever you're ready, or take a moment to get ready, and you should take that moment. Do, thank your accompanist afterwards, and thank the people that you're performing for. Don't. And this can be controversial because not everyone believes this, but don't look at your accompanist and nod. Hear me out. If you, after you slate yourself, you take a moment, you lower your head, and you get into character, and then you raise your head, your accompanist will know when you're ready and it'll be a more impactful experience than... That disrupts your personal flow and it disrupts the experience that they're having with you, the connection that your audience is having with you. And your accompanist knows. Don't stop. If you forget the words, just keep going on blabber words, la la la, just make it up and keep going because that shows commitment and that is a decision and it will be memorable. Also, don't forget your binder on the way out. When you're, when you're finished with your pieces and you thank them and you go over and thank your accompanist, obviously remember your binder. You don't want to be the person who someone has to chase down to give back their binder. Next I'm going to talk about the dance call. I have a couple tips about this dance call. Firstly, you should try to get yourself to stand more where you can be seen and where you can see, obviously, because they will teach it fast and they might not always teach it again, they might not repeat themselves, so just make sure that you can see the majority of what's going on and that they can see you, because number two, they are going to watch the entire time. They're not just looking at the outcome, they are taking note of how quickly you're learning, whether or not you're taking this seriously. They want to know who is learning material, who is teaching material. The third thing is, during your actual performance, smile and commit. Even if you get lost, just make a decision and just don't break, don't throw a tantrum, just keep going and don't give up. See, I'm going to discuss what you should do after your audition. Make sure that you send a note thanking the people who, for their time and consideration. You should try to make this note a more personalized note. If you had a conversation, for instance, talk about, say, oh, I had a nice conversation with you. I remember I enjoyed our conversation about the color of my shoes and whether or not I can wiggle my ears and my time directing Searching for David's Heart. Alrighty guys, that is all I've got for you today, but thank you for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, I'll be happy to look at them, answer any questions you have, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to see some more of me, you can subscribe and ding the bell. If you want to get to know me on a more personal level, maybe follow my Instagram or my Twitter or my TikTok maybe, go ahead and the, look at the links down below. And that is it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And bye! Last thing to remember is to breathe and break a leg. Alrighty guys, that is all I've got for you today. 
But thank you for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, I'll be happy to look at them, answer any questions you have. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to see some more of me, you can subscribe and ding the bell. If you want to get to know me on a more personal level, maybe follow my Instagram or my Twitter or my TikTok maybe. Go ahead and the, look at the links down below. And that is it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And bye!